We are in the very midst of revolution. The most complete, unexpected, and remarkable of any in the history of the world. How few of the human race have ever had an opportunity of choosing a system of government for themselves and their children. I am not without apprehensions, gentlemen. But the end we have in sight is more than worth all the means. That was a scene from the critically acclaimed HBO miniseries, John Adams, depicting when Adams, who was part of the Declaration of Independence Drafting Committee, attempts to persuade other members of the Continental Congress to vote in favor of declaring the colonies free from British control. Other than that 2008 HBO series, John Adams might not get as much of a historical look as the likes of Washington and Jefferson, but he was nonetheless instrumental to the birth of the nation. And so the second president who we're focusing on this morning in our week-long conversation with acclaimed writer and journalist Tom Ricks and his new book, First Principles, What America's Founders Learned from the Greeks and Romans and How That Shaped Our Country. Also with us, biographer, historian, and journalist Richard Brookheiser. His latest book is titled Give Me Liberty, A History of America's Exceptional Idea. Richard is also a senior editor for National Review. Of course, that series inspired by David McCullough's wonderful uh, book on John Adams. But uh, I don't think, uh, Tom, uh, they, would, they would put, uh, put the John Adams uh, that, that you discovered uh, in an HBO miniseries. I, I just, you, you had said he's the odd man out among the first presidents. He lived modestly. That was positive. But you also said, like, I think even McCullough, that he was quirky, self-obsessed, anxious, and vain. And you, you had a quote. Uh, someone said of him, he was very great while he spoke of his country, but he was almost as little when he spoke of himself. Talk about this man who uh, achieved greatness in spite of many of his personal failings. I want to begin by saying that he's particularly timely to talk about today as I was watching your discussions of the failure of the current president to acknowledge his defeat and to begin a transition. The first president in this country to turn over power peacefully to the opposition was John Adams. And that was a great act. Now, being John Adams, he also didn't show up at the inauguration of Thomas Jefferson, his successor. He left town on the 4 a.m. coach to Baltimore. Uh, he, is, he is the most modern of, of these first four presidents in many ways. He wears his feelings on his sleeve. He is extraordinarily vain. Uh, he constantly thinks he doesn't get enough credit. I suspect this is because unlike the other uh, peers of the, in this book, he never really had a mentor. Um, he was so off-putting, I think, to people. He was so anxious, so ambitious in many ways, that despite being an honest man, an intelligent man, um, nobody ever really wanted to take him under their wing. He's a very prickly guy. I think he was also very fortunate that he married a wonderful woman. If it's possible to have a crush on a woman who's been dead for 200 years, I have a crush on Abigail Adams. Uh, <laughs> but I think also yeah. that uh, John Adams' great failure as president was backing the Alien and Sedition Acts and basically saying anybody who criticizes me or the government is a traitor and I'm going to throw him in jail. And he throws a bunch of journalists in jail, really maliciously. Uh, so an editor in New York, Thomas Greenleaf, is going to be indicted, but then he is um, killed by smallpox. So they indict his, wa his wife, his widow. She falls ill as well. So they indict the printer of the newspaper. And they went after the opposition newspapers. And when Jefferson became president, he put an end to all that nonsense. But it really was a reactionary action by Adams. Yeah, you know, he was, he was uh, such, a, such a hothead. Uh, I, I remember reading in McCullough's book uh, that he heard uh, a battle uh, going over the common area in his own town, 
and was excited. He basically said, I don't care whether we win or lose. I just like the action. And it reminds me of what you wrote about uh, George Washington when he was being attacked for being indecisive. And, and you stated uh, that far better to be indecisive and careful than to be decisive and wrong. And that, in fact, is what saved the republic. Uh, Washington's, at times, indecisiveness when there was no clear way forward. But uh, Adams, what, and while we're showing these two men, you also point out, well, George Washington was still trying to acquire status in the British Army. John Adams was calling for revolution. So, so he really was the first among the four presidents to see where the United States needed to go. And as, as was said, he got the revolutionary ball rolling, especially in New England. And I think that's what his real greatness was, is even before the First Continental Congress of talking about revolution and publicly siding with it, saying, yes, I am going to go to the Continental Congress, even when his best friend tried to talk him out of it and said that he would lose and it would be awful for him. But as a member of Congress during the revolution, I have to say, though, when you read his commentary and defense, it must have driven Washington bananas. Uh, Adams thought he knew a lot about military affairs, and I have no idea why. Maybe Richard Brookheiser does. Uh, he knows this period better than I ever will. But he, he constantly is sort of saying Washington's wrong on strategy. Everybody talks about a slow um, defensive war. That's nuts. We need to just go out and have a big battle and win this thing, which is the opposite of the way to win this thing, as Washington knew. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.